Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today's topic is infinitely many equilibria. I cover this in lesson 1.8 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. Check the video description for more information about that. So here's the game that we're looking at today. We have two players and two strategies for each player. Player one's got up down, player two has left right. Now I want to start out by noticing that player two has a strictly dominated strategy. Right is strictly dominated by left. So if player one is playing up, then left is better than right because one is better than zero. And if player one is going down, then left is still better than right because negative two is better than negative five. So player two should never want to play right. She should always want to play left. That's a strictly dominant strategy. So let's get rid of right and just reduce the game to this. So we're going through iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies here. And we should stop and see now that if player two plays left, player one is indifferent between up and down right? Because he gets three regardless of his choice. As long as player two is playing left as a pure strategy, player one doesn't care whether he plays up or down. So he's indifferent between those. He can't profitably change his strategy. So what that means is that there are two pure strategy Nash equilibria here. Up left is a pure strategy Nash equilibrium. Player two doesn't want to deviate to right because that was a strictly dominated strategy. And player one can't profitably deviate to down because three is still three. And likewise, this is a pure strategy Nash equilibrium as well, because player two playing left means that player one can't switch from down to up and profitably deviate because he's still getting three. And again, player two doesn't want to switch to right because right was strictly dominated, so this negative two is better than whatever she would get from playing right. But there's also something weird here. There are infinitely many equilibria in what we call partially mixed strategies. So a partially mixed strategy Nash equilibrium is a Nash equilibrium where one player plays a pure strategy and another player plays a mixed strategy. So in this case, player two is the one playing a pure strategy. She's always playing left. And player one is playing a mixed strategy here where he goes up with probability P and down with probability one minus P. And any number P makes this work out to being an equilibrium. Why is that? Well, player two, again, doesn't want to shift her strategy from left ever because right is a strictly dominated strategy. And because player one is so indifferent here, because he's always getting three regardless of what's going on, that means he can't profitably deviate to anything else, right? It doesn't matter if he chooses up or down. He can't profitably change his strategy. He's stuck getting three no matter what. So that makes him free to mix in this manner. And because P could be one half or one third or two fifths or 67% or anything of like that, and because there are infinitely many numbers between zero and one, there are infinitely many equilibria in this game. Now, it's worth noting here that we haven't specifically talked about these sorts of instances before, where this is the original game, right? In the original game, player two, by playing left, makes player one indifferent between up and down. And that's what allows player one to mix in that pattern, or in any pattern whatsoever, where he's playing up with probability P and down with probability one minus P. So whenever you see a game where one player playing a pure strategy makes the other player indifferent, Again, that's just in this case right here, right? When player one's playing left, player two, or whenever player two's playing left, player one is indifferent between up and left. If that's an instance in a game, whether it's just a small two by one game like that after iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies, or an original game like this, you must check for a mixed strategy of the other player, in this case, player one, that makes player two want to play that pure strategy that makes player one indifferent and willing to mix. So in this case, again, it's player two playing left, makes player one indifferent between going up and down, and player one going up and down, doesn't matter which one he chooses, player two's never going to want to shift over to right. So that's a pure, st or, sorry, a partially mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. Now, another example of this actually occurs in that weak dominance game that we looked at in the last video, but I will leave you to solving that for yourself. All right, that wraps up this video. In the next video, we're going to talk more about this number of equilibria in a game. So this was a strange game because it has infinitely many equilibria. We haven't really seen too many examples of that before. We've seen a lot of games with an odd number of equilibria. And in the next game, we're going to talk about whether that's a coincidence or not. And in fact, it's not a coincidence. Virtually all games have an odd number of equilibria. And we will talk more about that in the next video. Join me then.